This is very common. The one who causes the most pain to us are the ones who are closest to us. This is, this is natural. It's very, very rare that a guy on the street is going to actually cause a pain that is so deep that you can't sleep at night. We tend to usually, even if someone is rude, mean, obnoxious, hoots, yells, does something, you know, inappropriate, we may be offended in the moment, but chances are we're just going to understand, oh, maybe the guy is crazy, maybe they're just a wrong person, but we're going to move on on our way. The people whose stains on our hearts really hurt us are always the people close to us. They're the only ones who actually have the power usually to really get in us. But that doesn't mean that we don't have an option. It doesn't mean that we don't have tools or ways. This is what our, our spiritual practices give us. And when you can't distance yourself, it's someone you live with. What you have to do is you have to ask yourself, if I can't change the outer situation, can I change the inner situation? So if I can't get that person to stop what they're doing? Can I get my own reaction to what they're doing to change? Can I change my own inner reaction? Because we all have only one choice really in situations like that. To be right or to be in peace. On an objective level, you may be right, the other person may be wrong. But that doesn't actually serve you because nobody wants to be told they're wrong. I have yet to see a fight between people in which, in the midst of a heated fight, one of them actually says, okay, you are right, and actually means it. You are right, I give up. But that's very different. That doesn't actually mean you are right. It just means, Ki, I'm tired of fighting enough, forget it. But I have yet to actually see someone in that heat of the fight say anything like, wow, thanks. Didn't realize how wrong I was. Didn't realize what illusion I was living in. Thank you so much for pointing it out to me. Nobody says that. Everybody is convinced they are right. Which is why being right is of very little use in our personal relationships. What's much more important is being in peace. But if you recognize this isn't going anywhere, I choose peace instead of being right, you can actually completely remove your energy from that situation in such a way that the other person can't hurt you. That there's no longer a fight because you no longer are giving any energy into that situation. And most people aren't going to fight themselves for very long. People want to fight. They want someone to fight with. And if you don't fight, if you don't give any reaction, energetically even, and that doesn't mean walk out quietly and slam the door, but there's no energetic reaction at all, the energy dissipates. If you and I are holding opposite ends of a rope and we're both pulling, I let go. I just let go of my end. What happens to the rope? Yeah, it flops. Is there any tension in the rope left at all? Now, it's interesting because you haven't let go. Only I've let go. But one person letting go of the rope removes 100% of the tension in the rope. You don't actually need both people to let go. You just need one to let go. And the same thing is true in these sorts of situations. If you absolutely just let go of your end of the rope, energetically, 
There is no more tension. What we're dealing with is just people's own psychology and people's own way of dealing. It's a beautiful spiritual practice to just see if you can let go of the tension of your end of the rope. Find peace even in the midst of the other person's craziness. Metaphorically, you cover your heart through these practices. When you know, ah, this person's about to dump tea or coffee on me. You remove your energy from that situation. And you work within to be an energetic manufacturer, transmitter of love and peace. It may impact the other person, it may not impact the other person, but at least you've created an environment for you to live in of love and peace.